Hi, I'm Aaron Vaness with C3 Controls. In this video, we'll talk about the basics of a terminal block. So let's get started. Terminal blocks are insulated modular connectors that are designed to connect different circuits together. These components are also referred to as terminal connectors or connection terminals. Terminal blocks generally appear as a long strip comprised of several individual terminals, hence the name. These conducting terminals and clamping components form the basis of the terminal block structure. The terminals serve different functions, to ground the wires, connect outlets, as well as electrical switches to the mains in the presence of electrical power. In short, terminal blocks help organize the wires and secure them efficiently. Terminal blocks are found on a variety of power management in industrial devices, including motor protection relays, variable frequency drives, power supplies and connectors, programmable logic controllers, traffic controls, and so on. Terminal blocks are classified by their device types and structures. So let's talk about a few types. Fuse holder terminals. As the name suggests, the terminal includes fuses. In case of a short circuit, only the wiring section associated with the fuse holder is affected. Ground circuit terminals. These are used to ground systems, as well as their components, and have a strong resemblance to the single level feed through terminals. However, the only difference is the metal connection and the fuse blocks carrying the terminated wire are grounded. Grounded circuit terminals are alternative replacements to standard terminal blocks and can be easily integrated into the terminal block rail. I.O. block and sensor blocks. An I.O. block is designed to connect a controller and a device, whereas a sensor block is designed to connect different sensor devices, including proximity sensors. Thermocouple terminal blocks. These terminal blocks connect different thermocouple leads together. There are two types. One type has a metal connection strip and wire made of the same metal, and another type where the leads are clamped on both sides of the block. In the second type, the metal connection strip within the block is not utilized. Power distribution blocks. These blocks are mainly used for electrical power distribution from a single input to multiple outputs. And finally, disconnect terminal blocks. In these blocks, wires can be easily disconnected by a knife switch or a lever. Disconnect terminal blocks are also known as switch blocks because they allow easy connection and disconnection without affecting the wiring. So what are the different types of structures? One, single level pass through terminal blocks, also known as single feed terminal blocks. These blocks have one input terminal and one output terminal. Due to their basic design, these blocks are mainly used to connect two wires. Two, dual level terminal blocks. These terminal blocks feature two connection terminals stacked on top of one another to save, save on space. Three, three level terminal blocks. These terminal blocks feature three connection terminals stacked, enabling multiple connections to a single block. Because terminal blocks differ in their design and purposes, it is important to consider the spec their specifications. Here are the five most important. One, mounting, din rail fixed with screws on a panel, or mounted on the printed circuit board. Two, wire termination, screw clamp, spring clamp, insulated displacement connectors or IDC, tab connections, push-in or barriers. Three, the number of contacts and corresponding wires. Four, current carrying capacity of the wire. And five, orientation, 45, 90, and 180 degrees. Even though the selection of the terminal block mainly depends on the specifications, as mentioned earlier, there are a few other factors to consider, such as voltage and wire size, the space requirements of the application, the total number of blocks or poles required for the application. Some poles may require jumper connections, and in such cases, it is important to identify the total number of jumper connections to be performed. Does the application require a special function block, such as a disconnect, ground, fuse, switch, or indicating type? And finally, analyze where isolation is required. These separations will contain creepage in the terminal assembly, as well as create better visual separation. Terminal blocks are designed in accordance to NEMA and IEC standards and must comply with UL 1059, CSA 22.2, number 158, and IEC 60947-1 and 60947 one well, that's it for this video. We here at C3 Controls hope this information provided was helpful. To download the companion white paper and to find other white papers, go to c3controls.com blog. Thank you for watching and have a great day from C3 Controls.